Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the regular June 19th meeting of the Plattsville Planning Commission. Officially calling the meeting to order, we'll begin with a Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you very much. May we please have the roll call? Member List. Here. Chair Friend. Here. Vice Chair Keeney. Here. Member Saragossa. Here. It's noted that uh, Member Juba is absent this evening. Noted and regrettable. We will miss him. Uh, item one is the consent calendar, including adoption of the agenda, adoption of April 17 minutes, and presentation of the bylaw amendments. Uh, do I have a motion to adopt the consent calendars presented? Moved. Motion. Second. And second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Consent calendar is approved as presented. Item two is not applicable. Item three, items of interest to the public. This is an opportunity for members of the public to uh, present on issues to the Planning Commission which are not on our agenda this evening. Please be advised that the Planning Commission can take no action on any comments, and uh, we will limit you to three minutes per speaker. If you have an item you would like, to, or something you'd like to share with us this evening, please approach the podium. The chair recognizes Mr. Drobish. Good evening, nice in here. Um, just two things, back to a previous meeting when a majority, it seemed like a majority of the commission wanted to have its own public hearing and discussion on the Clay Street project, and I completely agree. And you guys set your own agenda. If you want to have a public discussion and hearing, you can set an agenda item for that. So I wish you would. I mean, the more discussion about what this project actually entails, the better. And maybe we can get things worked out ahead of time instead of later. Um, and then earlier, later today after work, I drove by and it seems like the Clay Street trail section right there, uh, earth has been disturbed. There's a project going on there. But this would potentially seem to be in, in contempt of court. The uh, Superior Court um, ordered the city to do a, an environmental study before any disturbance of the environment and the city still does not have a completed EIR for the Clay Street realignment project. And the trail, the farmer's market relocation is what is happening. The city is prepping that trail area, but they've gone ahead and disturbed the soil, including a wet area with drainage off of 50. So it'll be pretty interesting to see if somebody files a restraining order against the city because they kind of jumped the gun and don't have their environmental documents in order. So anyway, just a heads up on that. Good evening, uh, commissioners. Kirk Smith. Um, I, the comment I wanted to offer to you uh, is that uh, the staff has offered you a couple articles and I commend them to you. They're very well done. One of them concerns uh, due process. Uh, the idea of notice to be provided at, at meetings and, and the functions of quasi-judicial proceedings uh, these are things I've talked about before, but it's nice to see that the staff has provided them. And, and by the way, Commissioner uh, Friend was very kind to point out when I was here before uh, about how a lot of the support material is highlighted so you can click on it. But as I said at the time, that's not always the case. I don't usually read your agenda. I have somebody tell me about it because there's rarely more than two or three items, unlike the city council agenda. And, and in fact, I look back and, and I was correct. There are still a number of items that are not highlighted. Uh, and it's not because of something that's nefarious, it's just that happens. Um, likewise, um, on the subject of due process, uh, half of you uh, are, are new to the idea of a proceeding with the case of, of the CNH motor parts, mm -hmm. but that's an instance in which you had a quasi judicial role. And so you, I don't mind you making comments about someone in a quasi legislative role making comments, uh, just give them a chance to respond. But in that instance, you didn't make any findings of credibility, and then you have one of the witnesses come in, Steve Calfee, and from the bench, from the dais, there's a number of commissioners who are 
are talking about how flattered they are that he's there, fawning after the guy, uh, when there are credibility questions, as I pointed out. Nobody made any findings about that. So I really commend that article to your attention. I think it's very important. And frankly, I would really urge you to, to keep in mind that your function is to be independent. Uh, what's the worst thing that can happen to you? They're, they're gonna cut your salary? Uh, they'll give you the Mike Drobish treatment? I mean, what's, what's the worst thing that can happen? So when you make a judgment that you think the Clay Street Project uh, is within your bailiwick, great. That's your judgment. If a lawyer gives you advice or a doctor, that's just it, it's advice. You don't have to follow it. And you can get advice elsewhere. There's a number of lawyers available for free from the local university law schools. Uh, but I've seen over and over, we start off with, it used to be one staff member, then it got to two. Why, when it came to the Jack Russell Brewery, we had, we not only had the engineer, we even had the city manager. I mean, that would suggest that that must be somebody really important. Kurt, so, I'll just remind you of the time limit. Thank you for your comments, but I have to remind you of the time Yeah, limit. I was looking at the clock. Okay. So, um, again, I would urge you to be independent and exercise independent judgment. Thank you. Anybody else? Appreciate the comments from the public, as always. Uh, in addition to items from presented to us, uh, impromptu from the public, we have two items that are actually on the agenda. I, I don't recall ever seeing this format, which caught me a little bit by surprise, but I'm glad I caught it in time. So uh, if, if I could ask for a little bit of direction from staff, do we simply mention these or is staff going to discuss them? I mean, I, I obviously saw them in the packet. but Just so I know what you are referring to, can you show me what uh, document? Uh, I'm looking at my agenda. So the first of 3.1 is written communication. There was a letter from Cindy Savage, yes. for example. So, right. so I'm, not, I'm not entirely certain how we should handle this so as to be transparent to the public and the vast viewing audience. Because I see. Because they aren't here to speak on this. No, uh, I did speak with Ms. Savage this afternoon, but she could not attend tonight. Okay, so, so it's, would, it's this, an, would this be, actually, would this not have been more appropriate under reports from staff because she's actually reporting back to the commission that she committed she would do and, and so maybe that might be an okay, appropriate sure. place to put that. Mm -hmm. And then I presume that 3.2 is what we just we just entertained? Correct, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, great. Thank you, Andrew. There are two, two items that I provided to you before the meeting just yes. for, for housekeeping purposes. One is a public comment we received today. It's for item 4.2 on tonight's agenda. Correct. It's from Glenn and Patty Farrington. And uh, the other document is a, uh, a copy, a full copy for your uh, records of chapter one of the zoning ordinance. Staff found some anomalies between the codified version and what you have already at your, uh, okay. so this is to replace that. Great, thank you. They reflect some changes in the, the definitions we made some time ago. We just didn't give you the right copy for okay. that. Yeah. So noted, commissioners have that information. All right, terrific. Then uh, moving on to item four, 4.1, public hearing. Uh, this is a request uh, for 2904 and 2908 uh, Bedford Avenue to replace 16 windows on two residences that are located within the Bedford Avenue Clay Street Residential Historic District. Andrew, you probably have these staff. Yes, I do. This. The uh, two addresses, uh, addresses are, again, located uh, within the Clay Street Bedford Avenue residential historic district. They're also on a single parcel. Uh, 2904 Bedford is a single family residence that the county assessor's office estimates was built in 1911. Uh, the city does have a 1952 construction permit which indicated a remodel to the structure and in 1991 vinyl siding was installed under a construction permit. Two, uh, 2908 is the second address on this parcel and it is a structure containing an apartment over a single car garage. This structure was constructed under a permit through the city in the 1959 to 1960 timeframe. A paved driveway serves both of these structures. Neither of the structures is listed in the city's historic resource inventory, the state register of historic resources, or the national register of historic places. The property owner requests site plan review approval to replace a total of 16 existing windows on the site. 10 of which would be on the single family home and six of which would be on the apartment garage structure. Vinyl retrofit window inserts within existing window openings are proposed. 
and the applicant submittal package contains a full description of the window types and their locations on each building. The application mentions the non-operative condition of many of the windows that compromise uh, emergency egress, as well as the energy efficiency of the new install as the reasons behind the window retrofit request tonight. This request is before the commission due to the proposed alterations to these two buildings that are located within the historic district and that the alterations are visible from the street. Staff reviewed the request for consistency with the general plan and city code. The applicant's scope of work serves to protect and enhance the visual quality of the Bedford Avenue residential area by replacing deteriorated materials with windows of similar appearance and energy efficiency, which is consistent with goal C and policy six of goal C of the community design element of the general plan. As, as outlined on pages three and four of staff's report, the request is consistent with the design guidelines under the site plan review and historical criteria under the zoning ordinance in that the historic character of the home would be retained through the use of retrofit windows that match the existing window styles of double hung, casement, and slider in their existing openings. The request also quali qualifies as a class one categor categorical exemption under, under the California Environmental Quality Act as it involves minor alterations to an existing structure not listed on the city, state, or federal historic resource inventories, and also that no expansion of the residential use on the site is proposed. Public notice was provided through direct, direct mail and property owners within 500 feet received a written public notice. Uh, no public comment was received regarding this request. Staff recommends the commission conditionally approve the request, making the findings A, B, C, D, and E provided on page five, subject to the conditions uh, also on within the staff report. The uh, applicant's agent is in the audience this evening, and uh, that concludes my staff report. Thank you, Andrew. It's always a, uh, a very well done and thorough staff report. And I concur with your comment that the applicant provided a fairly thorough application on this matter. Questions of staff by commissioners? Uh, maybe it's more of a comment, or I guess it is a question. I was just wondering on, I think this is the first window I I've seen, but I know these have come before the commission before. Um, have we, uh, I guess the question, <laughs> Have we ever not approved one of these? I mean, I guess the question I'm getting to is if it's almost administerial, um, shouldn't we look at something where, unless they're changing structural, um, if there's structural changes to the windows or some other, you know, that it almost seems ministerial at, at some point. Um, so I guess that's a question to staff. Uh, just first, and maybe yeah. to my fellow commissioners too. I mean, I know you've, You've probably run across these, but I'm just looking for some historical guidance here. And we can have additional discussion on this when, we, when it comes back to us. But uh, if, uh, if I understand correctly, you're, you're somewhat suggesting that unless staff is not otherwise going to approve it, that you would say it would come to planning commission. Otherwise, they would simply keep it. So we, I think that might be worthy of some subsequent discussion. Correct. Okay. Questions of staff? Uh, hearing none, this is the opportunity for the applicant or the applicant's agent uh, to present any information additional or supportive uh, uh, to us for, and for the public. Be so kind as to state your name. Yeah, my name's Craig Beckley, and I'm a, <clears throat> excuse me, I work for a company uh, Permit Services out of Santa Rosa, and I'm the authorization for both Sears, the contractor, and for Ms. Teresa Semper, the homeowner. And unless you have any questions of me, I have nothing further to uh, add. Thank you. Please don't leave until I determine that we have no questions. Mm -hmm. Mr. List? It's my understanding that <clears throat> the double hung windows are the ones that face uh, Bedford. Is that correct? Uh, and are they uh, true double hung or are they a single, you know, double hung goes both directions? Right. They're, they're, uh, they're single hung. They're single hung. Okay. Right. The, the, old, okay. the original wood sash. Um, um, that are in the house are right. just simply okay. single. 
And Commissioner, for my edification, because that's actually the first time I've heard the a good definition. I, I always, I've always heard that described. I wonder what the difference is, and I never bought to look it up. Visually, can you can you tell the difference? You can't see it unless you actually functionally go and try to move it. Either way, okay, great. Thank you for that. Any other questions? No, I'm okay. finished. Good questions? So, so I I do have one question, and you may or may not be able to answer this. In comparing uh, the vinyl replacements against a wooden replacement, the, cla the class replacement, typical price differences on that would be, can you, can you venture a guess? No, I cannot. I, I don't because, I, like I said, I'm just an agent for Sears, so I, uh, I wouldn't know the pricing. Okay. Um, other than other projects that I've done before, um, they're quite a bit more expensive the, the to, wood to do a wood. Yeah, the wood are much more expensive? Absolutely. Yeah, okay, Absolutely. That, that's my impression. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. No additional questions, correct? Okay, thank you, sir. Anyone in the audience wish to uh, comment on this project? Good evening, Kirk Smith. A uh, couple of comments. One is that Sue Taylor, who could not be here, had a response to the comment about whether there's uh, you know, some issues about what happens to the property, what's the impact. And she says that uh, you're going to lose the ability to have an historic district because once you change those windows, then you change the nature of the building such that you're not going to be able to keep the classification. So if you, if you say that it's not on the historic registry, so what? If you make these kind of changes, you're not going to have it come back. So no matter what was done in 1960 or what was done in how many other, other cases, uh, there is an ordinance which establishes that this is an historic district. And you have a building that was created in the arts and crafts period 1911. And so you notice that in the older section of the old building, they have glass that appears to be those sections that are like 10 by 10 or 12 by 12. So what you do at that time is you go to the hardware store, there's no glass company, and you get sections like that. On the newer portion where you have the vinyl, you have bigger panes that wouldn't have been available in that period. So even if you're trying to get something that looks like what it was, if it's not squares like that period or something consistent with that period, then it wouldn't be the same. Um, so again, you need to, I, I think that's a question to look at. And she has some experience. All these engineers who said the historic Hangman Street building couldn't be saved and they saved it. And what she says from all the research they've done is that you're not gonna be able to keep the historic district if you allow these kind of changes to keep making. So whatever the, what is done before doesn't mean you're, you're not following star decisis. You don't have to sh follow precedent as if that makes it that way. But those are the issues. And I don't know. All I know is I hear what she's saying and she has more expertise in the matter than I do. Um, th those are my concerns. Um, wood has the same insulation qualities as the vinyl. Uh, and I know I just got two calls today from a contractor, people get flooded with them all the time, who's offering you solar energy for your roofs and offering you all kinds of things like the, the windows. But in this case, you need to recognize that if you had an ordinance that has as an historic district, that should be the guideline to, to follow. Because if you keep making these exceptions, then pretty soon it's not going to be an historic district. Thank you very much for that. Anyone else? Good evening. I had a couple of things there. Um, so there's in the staff report, page two, under environmental review, um, staff is stating that this is not on the city's historic register, but it is a structure within a historic district, and that's a cluster of, of buildings within that district. To me, it would mean that those structures are part of the, store, the city's historic resource inventory. It's not just the boundary around the district, it's the structures within it. So for staff to claim a CEQA categorical exemption because the structure's not on the city's inventory, I would disagree with. Also, state law does allow categorical exemptions under CEQA, 
but specifically under the scenic highway section, it disallows categorical exemptions under CEQA. So we have a little, I brought this to you before I, I cited the code, the state code on that. There's no categorical exemptions in a scenic highway corridor. Anyway, so the city code declared that the Secretary of Interior guidelines would be the, the book for you guys to follow. And it says everything exterior visible from a public road comes to you for, for review and you're supposed to replace like for like, materials for materials, et cetera, et cetera. For me, because I'm in the industry, I can spot vinyl windows a mile away. Um, I don't think they're appropriate. Oh, also, the instant wood windows are removed and replaced with vinyl, that structure will never be eligible on the national or state historic registers unless they go back to wood, which is so expensive they wouldn't do it. So you're basically whittling away our historic districts little by little with every, I think you've done about a half dozen of these, and I've been against all of them because for me, at least the people should show that they tried, that they tried to save these windows, but most of the time, I don't think they do. They just get a bid. They think vinyl, wood is a better insulator than vinyl. There's all kinds of arguments I've made before, and so out the door. So anyway, I would, it is city code that Secretary of the Interior guidelines, you're supposed to replace like for like. So where's that rub? And if you think this is ministerial, it actually is city code, so you need to go to the city council and have them repeal the ordinances that they created to help kind of protect our historical resources. So. Mr. Drobish, if you'd be, Mike, yeah. just uh, going to indulge C Commissioner Liss. He actually has a question for okay. you. Um, using your analogy, uh, this house was retrofitted sometime 1960 with vinyl siding. So at this point, should we ask them to take the vinyl siding off and go back to the wood siding that was originally there? My, my point being is it would get so expensive for a homeowner that they would not be able to do those kinds of things when it has gone through changes. Okay? Uh, yeah, you're right. You and I and a few others have drive down the street and we can tell the difference. Okay? I, I worked uh, doing restaurant retrofits for a while and working with uh, fine woods on the interior and my boss told me woodworkers do woodwork for woodworkers, which means we do it and we know what we're looking at. Most people walk in and say, oh, it's wood and that's it. Okay? And I'm not using that as an excuse I'm just saying that if, if we're looking, in this case, I think it's a six over one or a nine over one on the windows, okay? 99.9% .9 of the people driving down the street will not be able to tell. And I doubt if this house would ever come back and be, be asked to be put on the, the national registry because of the changes that has gone through over the years. Therefore, my point is, if we can keep it as close to looking like it did in the early 1900s with the six over ones and the, the window casings that look close to what we have, I think we have accomplished something. Um, you know, I, I can imagine somebody coming here and saying, you know, I want to replace it with, with sliding windows. It ain't gonna happen, okay? So that, that's my point. I, I thought of that too when the staff report came out and so the house has had changes, especially the one next door. With vinyl siding, you're not, re you're not removing the siding, you're just covering it up. So that original siding is underneath it and it probably has lead in it and that's why they did it. So you can just pull that vinyl back off, but what happens is you have so much condensation in there, you get rot and it's rotting and people don't even know it. Um, and I would agree, I know you guys are gonna approve the vinyl windows, but you're right about the window sets. You know, six over one, whatever it is, match that. But if you go to Home Depot, you're not going to get that off the shelf. You will have to special order it. So for a compromise, I'd like to see the Planning Commission do that. If the window that they want to replace is a 12 pane, fine, vinyl 12 pane. And usually it's just one sheet of glass with a little fake styles in, in between it, but you get that look from the street. So I do agree with that. And so structures that have been altered, you know, they've already lost their significance, so 
not a big deal, but if one of these nice bed and breakfast Victorians comes in and wants to do wholesale changes, I hope you guys really hold them down. You can demand wood grain vinyl, colors in the vinyl. There's all kinds of other things you can require. And also for egress, vinyl has much thicker jams than most of those wood windows, so there's less egress, um, typically. But yeah, that's, that's it. And I do think that there's, the way the code reads could be cleaned up because it says any change from the exterior from the public road, if they want to replace the trim around the door, they technically have to come to you, get permission and pay the fees. That's a little crazy. So I think you do, should go to city council and say, let's just clean this up, figure out what's ministerial and what we're gonna be rock solid on. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak on this item? Hearing none, I'm going to bring it back to the commission for discussion and possible action. Uh, from the chair's perspective, there are actually two broad issues here. and uh, One is the project specifically at hand. Uh, the other issue are some of the, the, the comments and, and concepts that have been raised that actually I would like us to entertain with staff under item reports of commissioner and staff if we get under item six if we could just have that discussion because I, I and it kind of goes back uh, Commissioner Saragosa to what you brought up earlier too and I'd like to try to uh, capture some of that for possible discussion and action later on because this does come up frequently but with regards to the project at hand the chair would entertain uh, discussion and possible um, uh, action I almost said motive Commissioner? Um, I'm ready to make a motion. Okay. Uh, I move we approve uh, site plan 1801. Uh, we adopt the findings on page five of the staff report, uh, Roman numeral one, uh, items A through F, and on page six, uh, Roman numeral two, uh, items one through six. I second. That's uh, actually A through E. We a through E, excuse me, yes, that's correct. Thank we you. have a, a motion and a second, duly made. Did staff uh, capture the, the spirit of the motion? Uh, motion on the table, do we have discussion on the motion? The, the chair, go ahead, commissioner. Uh, no, no discussion uh, other than um, I think that this project improves the energy efficiency It is uh, of the home and makes it more comfortable is uh, person who grew up in a historical house. I know that uh, those double hung windows and uh, can make, uh, make, make or break the comfort and also uh, cost a lot to make the structure habitable. Um, and also I think that it's important to note that by replacing the windows um, in this manner, uh, especially ones that are not functioning, it actually helps protect this structure uh, from further decay and damage. I did, you know, um, as part of the, my research, go up and down the street and I noticed, as you mentioned in the staff report, there were other houses that have already replaced uh, some of their windows with vinyl. And uh, as you mentioned, it's, it's somewhat noticeable, but also, um, as you pointed out, the essential charm, the historical feel of that street has been maintained. I live in a home built in 1940 or 41 uh, all I believe they're single hung but I haven't tried because most of them don't work and um, uh, I am one of the few people that actually prefers a drafty house I don't like to be locked in I get claustrophobic um, but I think the uh, the motion is appropriate the chair supports the motion it, but I acknowledge as, as part of that that there are legitimate issues being raised here that I do want us to, to begin to discuss and maybe move towards something that's gonna be more satisfactory to us, to staff, and, and to the community at large. I'm hearing no additional discussion. Uh, we'll call the question, and uh, I think we can just do uh, uh, aye or nay vote on this. So all in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion carries. Uh, it has a uh, it's appealable to the city council in ten, for 10 days, correct? 10 calendar days, 10 yes. calendar days. Thank you very much. Uh, that will move us then on to item 4.2.
948 Oak Terrace Road, variance 1801. This is a request by the property owners to allow a 1.5 foot side yard setback where 10 feet is required under the R1-20,000 single family residential zone for an already constructed carport. Andrew, you have the staff report on this? I do. The, the project located is on the south side of Oak Terrace Road in north central Placerville. The site and the immediate surroundings are zoned for single family residential uses as well as accessory uses like the subject location. Uh, parcels on both sides of Oak Terrace Court also are zoned the same as the uh, project site R1-20,000. Parcel area is just under half an acre in size or uh, 18,730 square feet. And this is a legal parcel created through the North Ridge subdivision, unit number two, recorded in 1961. So the, the parcel, I mentioned its legal status, it, it predates the city's comprehensive zoning ordinance that was done in 1991. The site uh, and the subject site shares characteristics with several neighboring Oak Terrace properties. And I've addressed those on page four of staff report. Uh, these include the same zoning, parcel areas are less than the 20,000 square foot minimum lot area. Uh, the, men, the ones mentioned on page four are all downhill parcels sloping from the street. Home construction sits uh, almost every one that I've mentioned on, on page four uh, is located below the Oak Terrace road surface. Uh, all of them meet the minimum setbacks as well as the mature vegetation located on each of those parcels that I mentioned. Uh, site improvements include a single family residence and deck that was constructed by city permit in 1990. A permitted re-roof occurred in, excuse me, 2009. Uh, in 2014, there were window changeouts permitted under city permits. And in 2015, uh, the, the property owner uh, received uh, permission to remove a deck, install new LPG, they added a new deck and a new front entrance to the structure. The project is before the commission due to a code enforcement investigation involving the construction of a carport without obtaining a variance for encroaching into the side yard setback and without obtaining a construction permit. The applicants indicated in their submittal package that an existing metal carport was removed to accommodate the constructed wood frame carport as well as the turnaround. Uh, it's to note that the city has no permit record for that metal carport. Page four of staff's report includes a brief description of of the two side yard variance requests that were approved by the commission in recent years, both of which are on Oak Terrace Road. Each variance request, however, should be considered under its own merit based on site-specific circumstances and characteristics. Now, a small structure like a carport is considered accessory to a single family home and a minor side yard variance are examples of exempted activity from an evaluation under the California Environmental Quality Act. So therefore, this project classifies as a categorical exemption under CEQA. The carport, as we talked about, however, does not meet the minimum 10-foot minimum side yard setback for the R120 zone. Therefore, a variance is necessary and required because at its closest point, it was constructed a foot and a half or 1.5 feet from the westerly uh, side property line. This property line is shared with 940 Oak Terrace Road. The property owners of that address, 940 Oak Terrace Road, Robert and Cheryl Patton, submitted a letter in support of the variance request, and it was provided as part of tonight's agenda packet. As I briefly mentioned earlier, we did receive, the city received a public comment regarding this item from Glenn and Patty Farrington. Their comment uh, was made uh, available to you prior to the meeting or prior to this item and uh, it is part of the public record. Now they received the public notice in the mail and because they live within a 500 foot radius of the site uh, they are not in favor of the variance request. Per section 1035A of the zoning ordinance and section 65906 of state government code 
The commission, when evaluating a variance request, must consider if there are specific circumstances that uh, distinguish the project site from its surroundings and that these circumstances would create an unnecessary hardship for the applicant if the usual zoning standards were imposed. A variance request must also not adversely affect the general plan. The applicants indicated in their submittal that the reasons for the carport are to, one, have a place to store their larger vehicles on the property to protect them from damage caused by pine trees that are located on the site. And number two, Oak Terrace Road is narrow and has no shoulder for off pavement parking. The location of the site was chosen where it could, where it would be visible, less visible, excuse me, from public view and that tree removal was not necessary. Also, it's located where the site is less sloped, which could accommodate and did accommodate a vehicle turnaround. The commission could find that the request is reasonable in that the neighbors most affected, the patents, have submitted their support for the carport in its constructed location. The commission could further uh, find that the request for the current location of the carport would not cause the elimination of landscape tree features, such as the pine trees. Should the commission approve the variance, a building permit, otherwise known as a construction permit, would be required from the city's building division. Due to the carport's location, its proximity to the property line, fire resistive, fire resistive, resist, excuse me, resistive construction may be necessary due to that proximity to the property line. Should the commission determine to approve the request, staff is provided on page seven of staff's report, some findings and, and the conditions of approval for your consideration. The applicants are in the audience uh, this evening, and that concludes my staff report. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, any questions of staff by commissioners? I, I have a couple of questions for you. Um, is the uh, full scope of this request for the carport only, or does the, would the construction and building permit also include um, grading and creating the turnaround in the staff report and in the application I was a little confused as to whether you know all the turnaround area was already there prior to the uh, carport that's there now your authority tonight is just to consider the request to allow the well in this case the placement and ultimate uh, planning uh, excuse me building permit uh, uh, obtaining a building permit for the carport it's, itself. Uh, your role tonight is not the aesthetics of the carport. Your role is not to review the turnaround. Those are ministerial projects under our okay. code. And typically a carport would be as well. Uh, but in this case, it involves a variance due to its, its proximity to the property line. So the, um, the turnaround, uh, constructing the turnaround uh, within one and a half feet of the property line doesn't violate a, a setback? It regulation. does not. Okay. And um, I had another question as to whether a uh, city building inspector had been out to that site yet and uh, taken a look at the structure. No, we had a, a former code enforcement employee who is since uh, detached from the city. Um, the, this issue was brought to the city's attention and started a code enforcement uh, action. And uh, I don't believe our building official has been to the site. I know he's been to the site to view the other, I, I gave the laundry list of other improvements that have occurred over the years. I know he's been present for those or various inspections for those, but for this particular item, I, I don't believe so. Okay. I, I have nothing to, to say yay or nay, but I, I don't believe he has. So you don't know about the uh, fire uh, fireproof uh, building materials? Well, that was his comment. Okay. And that could come into play once, once the inspection process starts, yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, so just for clarification, our, our concern is really with the variance itself. Yes, the physical location. Yeah. Okay. yeah authorization. Thank, thank mm -hmm. you for that. Any other questions of staff? I, I have two. One, uh, the photograph that's up here behind me was not included in our, in our packet. We only had the one photo as far as I know. We had all three? Yes. Mine was, I, didn't ha I did not have I one. Well, then we, we apologize for that, but did the other members receive them? Okay. I did not have all Those three. came from the applicant, so that's okay. part of the applicant's submittal package. Okay. I, I didn't have, I had just one other one. All right. 
Oh, maybe I didn't get that deep into the packet, but I thought I Well, maybe oh, you didn't get I, one. The chair sits corrected. <laughs> okay. All right, so <laughs> I'll sit for the moment. And then uh, the other question I had, Andrew, uh, you mentioned in the report about the prior carport, so, which was taken down. It was a, a metal one, I think you said, and then replaced with, with this structure. Mm -hmm. And there was no record of that having been permitted. We have, we no, have no record no for the metal carport. Oh. From a code enforcement perspective, would the applicant have been requested to remove that or get a permit for it? Or would it have been grandfathered in? Well, uh, number one, I, I don't know the dimensions of the carport, nor do I know exactly where it was located on the premises. For, uh, assuming it didn't violate the variance. If it did not, and they were in the, and it was in the way for this construction, is that kind of the scenario? Well, all I know is that you said there was a, there was a prior structure there, okay? Yeah, the and applicant, uh, mentioned that in their submittal package okay. and it's in the general I think it was described in the general area of where the new carport was was built okay fair enough uh, I don't have any additional questions uh, perhaps they can clarify for okay. you yeah so this is the opportunity for the applicant or their agent to address the Commission uh, offer any additional clarification justification or to remain silent and just see how things go <laughs> your choice <laughs> Well, I, I can answer the question about the carport. I bought the house and it had the metal carport already on site and it was right next to the fence. Not exactly where that photo is. It was further up the driveway. So it sort of cut our driveway in half. But with regards to its proximity to the property line, almost identical to uh, what you have, identical. To have yeah. now. So okay. Actually worse. It was, it was all the way over to the edge. On, okay. Attached to the Front fence. To bed. Okay, great. Thank you. That's very helpful. All right. In, any Questions of the applicant from, from commissioners? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address the commission on this issue? All right, seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commission for discussion and possible action. I will note that what the applicant just shared with us, I, I do find of, of interest that, so technically the existing, uh, a prior structure was also in violation of, technical violation of, of, of the uh, setback issue. Um, and I don't know, I guess I can direct this to staff. If, if, if someone had called on that, we have no idea when that was constructed, would that have been grandfathered in or would the city have said you know this is you got to you got to come to the planning commission for a variant what would that look like uh, I would imagine it would be the same okay. type of ac application yeah okay. if if what's been stated is is in, in fact true then uh, a code enforcement would have started and verification of whether or not it met the setback and if it did not then uh, staff would have instructed them to either remove the structure or go through the variance process and a building permit process to get it legitimized. Okay. I'll just remind the commission that uh, there are some directions for us from staff on page six of the staff report, paragraph three, regarding the commission finding, uh, provide findings of fact that support the decision to approve, approve with conditions or deny the variance request. And that's kind of our, kind of our prerogative. Commissioner Liss, you have a question? Yeah. Could I ask the applicant to return to the podium? If I'm standing across the street in my, your neighbor across the street's yard, how much of this can they see? You're downhill, I, yeah, I, I realize that. Yeah, I think they can see the roof. Wait a minute. Okay. If you're standing across, all the way across the street in Lishman's Speak yard. Speak more closely to the microphone, sorry. Please. If you're standing, if you're talking about straight across the street in Lishman's right. yard, yeah. If, yeah, you can see down the driveway right into the carport. You, you see the whole thing is not no. cut off by the hill or anything. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. So then let me ask a staff a question. In general, the purpose of establishing the setbacks are to accomplish what? Is it a safety issue or is it an aesthetic issue or 
It, it, it's a couple of those things, and I would also add, you know, privacy would also be a component, but uh, fire life safety come, come to mind. Um, uh, to make sure that uh, buildings are set back in a uniform fashion so that people can have common maintenance w around their property. So access by uh, emergency equipment, should that need fires, et cetera. Um, so yeah, it's, it's all of those. Okay, thank you very much. Discussion? Thoughts? Okay, I'll uh, go ahead and start the ball All rolling. Right, let's go. <clears throat> As I understand, when we're to consider variances, we have to, um, our standard of review is um, consider the special circumstances for the variance versus granting special privilege um, that's not consistent uh, with you know, the privileges that other people uh, or other property owners have in the vicinity and, uh, and other like uh, properties. So it, um, it's a pretty high standard, actually. And um, I, as you just had, uh, Andrew, refresh our memories about uh, why we have uh, zoning ordinances and setbacks. Um, we don't want to get into a position where uh, we are no longer respecting uh, the zoning codes and uh, as I reviewed this and uh, kind of wrestled with this application um, I realized that um, well I had a hard time finding uh, what special circumstances are uh, on this property and uh, uh, just a I don't know, it was an interesting point when I saw this come up and then I drove by the house. Um, the carport looks uh, substantial. I actually uh, put a bid on that house in 1994. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, I kind of remember that it was a, you know, kind of a smallish house and um, a lot that had challenges on it, the, the slope and so on. And then I was going through the application and, um, you know, you, you filled out, you provided us um, some information uh, about your lot, um, but then there's um, the second part of your application. Uh, you, you are to provide us, the Planning Commission, uh, with what we need in order to really fairly evaluate this, this request. Um, in granting a variance, I mean, this establishes a precedent. Uh, there were a couple of listed in the staff report. Uh, there are completely different uh, variances that were allowed, but uh, that's what you had on file. But you, you see the reasoning, you, you understand exactly why the variance was granted. And so it's clear that the commission and the city uh, didn't give um, a property owner uh, special treatment. And that's what we have to avoid doing. We have to avoid the appearance of it. Um, as I looked at your uh, answers to the questions, there are four questions attached to the um, application. And um, number one is um, you're to describe the special circumstances of your property and um, including size, shape, topography. But what you listed in your answer in your attachment was that uh, you have a steep slope, a small garage, uh, and your property has pine trees that uh, can occasionally drop branches uh, and pine sap onto your vehicle. And um, I don't, I want to be sarcastic, but uh, quite honestly, that describes most of the lots in all of the city of Placerville, not just on Oak Terrace. It sounds like my neighborhood, where my friends live, where my acquaintances. And so um, I don't see the special nature and the need for this variance. Um, then, um, so I, I need a little more help, really, to establish that there's something peculiar about your lot. In fact, when I drive by it, it's it's a it's a beautiful lot. The house looks gorgeous, and um, you know you've kept the property up quite well. And um, so, as far as I compare it to the other lots on the street, you know yours is actually better than most. You have more privilege, I would say, and more use uh, than some of the other folks on either side, either below grade or at grade on the street. Give me, give me just one second. Just so you know, the public hearing is closed, so unless the oh, commission specifically okay. requests you to return. Okay. But thank you. Um, so, let's see. I'm sorry for that. Uh, uh, so then, um, it, it's, uh, I tried to make it, you know, my job to find the special condition of your lot, and I realized I kind of was just getting in a, a vicious cycle. 
Um, so I, I don't uh, feel that the commission has been provided uh, with that description of what's, what's so, you know, what's the special circumstance here that you are um, not able to use your property? And um, this is not to undercut property rights. I think that people, you know, have the right to do what they see fit on their property. But as the commission, another part of our role is to look at what happens to property um, and protect it and preserve it for future generations. So this, you know, it's um, things that are going through my mind as I considered your application. Uh, question number two is um, asks you to uh, assure the city and the commission uh, that we're not grounding a special privilege with this uh, variance. And again, I just couldn't find the answer in your response. Um, you, uh, you know, you say that the cardboard structure would provide uh, uh, protection from, uh, you know, the elements to your vehicles and so on. And um, that's true, but I, uh, again, I, I feel like I'm uh, giving you a, a special privilege. I've got homeowners in my own neighborhood uh, who have RVs and they put, you know, different covers on them or they uh, park them in a different lot for protection. There, there are other ways around that. So again, uh, you know, I don't see the um, substantial argument so that we're not giving you a, a special privilege. So these are the, um, this is how I want to get the discussion rolling uh, among the commission. These are the, th the thoughts. I, uh, I did go by your property. I, I looked at it on Google Earth. I looked at it from different perspectives, and perhaps I got a little more involved in it, a little bit uh, more involved in it than I should have, but it basically comes back to the fact that um, I didn't feel that you answered uh, questions one, two, uh, and four, um, how the variance will not adversely affect the general plan of the city. Um, I didn't feel that, that, that those were really, you know, gave me the information I was looking for. The staff report gives us findings. Again, when you do something that's uh, precedent setting like a variance, uh, I think you need strong findings so that, uh, um, you know, we, we support our zoning codes that we, we present to the public. You know, what, what is so different about this? Why, why was it deserved? Any other thoughts? Thank you, Commissioner. I just a quick question for staff. Uh, this approval, it would run with the land, or is it? It's uh, predicated uh, on the construction of this particular carport and the issuance of a permit. As long and as this particular structure is there, assuming it's approved. As long yeah, it's as not for any other structure. It's just, not for any other structure, just spe specific. But the, but the property could be sold. Yes. And if the structure's there, then the then the variance go, goes along. That's with correct. It. Okay, yes. great. Thank mm -hmm. you. Any, and again, thank you for that uh, fairly thorough discussion. Uh, Commissioner List? My concern is this. Uh, yeah, we have a structure that's built. It's built too, cross, too close to the property line. We understand that. We could, we could say, no, you need to take it down. Um, that, needs, that, ver that, uh, that setback needs to be, uh, you know, lived with on your property. I, look at, I looked at the property um, and, and I, guess I, I, I guess what I'm saying is I, I'm, I'm put with a choice. I can, I can say, yeah, I, I don't want you to have that carport there and then I'm gonna end up with an RV park there with a blue tarp over the top of it. And is that a good thing for my neighbor? Okay. Um, I have a neighbor that has a couple automobiles under tarps. I'd give anything to get rid of those blue tarps. Hate those things, okay? And, I, and I'm looking at this, and it was, t from, from the pictures and what I've seen, it looks like it was very well built. Um, structurally, I'll, I'll leave that for the city to determine. And, and so I, I, I think for me, it has to be a, a case by case. We can't. We can't just say, okay, everyone that comes in here, they're going to get a, they're going to get a variance on this. But in this case, um, the downhill slope, um, I was, when I asked the question, I was hoping that, that you're going to be able to say, well, they can see the top of the, the structure only, um, you know, because you're that far down. But that, that's here and there. So um, I'm, I'm concerned about building to the lot line like are, are close to the lot line in this case um, but I have I've designed a number of structures along the beach 
areas where you have 50 foot and uh, you know four foot lot lines, three foot lot li to the to the lot line, and so um, I can I can understand what what we're up against with this. And, um, that's just my comment. On it. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Saragossa, any comments? The um, and maybe this is first. Is that a solid uh, wall on the on the lot line side of the of the carport? It's pointing to that. It, on the it appears the upper portion is solid. Where the fence is, it's open. So it, it would even be a higher fence line as well on the. Are you, on that do you carport? want them to come up and explain? That yeah, um, if you wouldn't mind answering. Uh, now you may return to the podium. <laughs> <laughs> the, from the from the top of the fence up, it it is. Uh, basically a solid wall and it's put there basically for privacy you know where we sit way low in that lot right. both neighbors are way high and it's you, you got nowhere to hide <laughs> what's the uh, what's the height of the uh, of the port carport I mean that solid wall on that side well the the height of the fence right there is probably six and a half seven feet and the, the front part of that wall is probably nine or ten. The back, well, it's all that. It's all nine or ten, nine to ten feet on that edge. Okay. Thank you. But, so I guess that's. I'm, I'm sorry. I just for clarification, though, um, the carport uh, shielding component is not attached to the fence. They're separate, right? Right. Yeah. Right. There's a tiny bit of space between the two. There's a, there's space but there, between. But it's kind of like that, and you got you got the. Privacy shield. That's that, that was just sense? brought yeah. down Correct. for privacy yeah. from yeah. the from okay. the roof. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, I guess my one concern I have is, I mean, not only are we granting a variance, but we're also because of that solid structure on that side, we're also looking at a ten foot wall on the other side of that um, uh, on that lot line. So we're it's almost like two things we're we're granting here, which would be a a higher fence um, variance as well as a, a carport I'll you know I know I know they're attached but um, you know if it hadn't been built already it, this might have been something that could have been uh, <laughs> alleviated and I know you're trying to get an RV underneath here so um, I know it has to be a certain height but In other words, that would make it all open. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that actually would, I think, be a, at least from my perspective. Um. It's just for staff's clarification. Can I can I ask a question? Go yeah. ahead, Andrew. Yeah. Are are we referring to the fence that's apparently the property line? Are we talking about part of the structure of the carport? I'm, it looks like a skirt. I'd call, I'll call it a skirt that's on the carport structure itself. We're talking about that skirt. Yeah. It visually essentially creates right. the appearance of that. But okay. They're, they're two separate structures. But I understand the distinction. About that yeah. skirt right. So it's essentially the, another, it's like a wall next to another wall, which right. would be the skirt on the side just, of that carport. Just to let you know, it, it, is, it is that part of this carport that would be potentially subject to that fire resi resistive construction. Oh, interesting. At its closest point, that was a concern of our building department. Uh, well, then uh, that's still within the purview of the building department, assuming we grant the variance, for example, just for example. But if you're granting that, that shielding wall, for lack of a better term for but, it. But if that runs into uh, an issue of, of fire safety from the building department, they could say, well, you can have everything. You can have a structure there, but you can't have that. That it's my understanding from speaking to the building official that there are applications that can be put on the wood to make it fire resi resistive. I see. All right. All right. Well, that may be maybe of some value in our deliberation. Then. Any, anything else, Commissioner, at this time? You want to think a little bit more? Uh, no, I, I think it's just I, I'd prefer not to, to have that solid on that side. Um, to me, it just looks like a huge wall um, on the other side in addition to the um, the carport, but um, I'm if I may, um, the only the only reason I would leave it there was the neighbor next door. If he is a little bit higher, 
then he would not be able to see the side of the RV, and I'd much rather look at wood than I would an RV. I, I do need to step in one more time. Um, your role tonight is just to look at the structure, not the aesthetics of it or the its very, components. I mean, just, yes. just a, the, regard, something right. is in the zone. Correct. And they need, okay, I, uh, yeah. Right. So I, I, I get that. Yeah. Uh, but, to, but to the extent of the structure is or is not attractive might also factor into a decision to grant or deny. Fair enough? And that could certainly be a comment made by the membership, yes. yes. Commissioner. Okay. Um, <clears throat> just to get back to the, um, the building uh, is, uh, permit side, uh, you told me the inspector hasn't been there, but is there a possibility that um, the inspector goes out um, and says, no, this doesn't meet our uh, specifications and it has to be torn down because of that reason? Do you think that that's, how likely is that? That is a possibility. There are, there are uh, appeal procedures to the, uh, and there's a local, um, uh, Pierre, what's, what's the, I can't remember what the group's called. It's so rarely met. Um, it's a building appeals board. Appeals board, thank you. Okay, so with the, uh, if your building inspector said that there was, uh, that it doesn't meet, then that could be appealed. Okay. Uh, the reason that I ask that is that um, um, I, I'm hesitant to vote in favor of a variance to set this precedent only to have it negated by, you know, the, uh, the building inspector saying, oh, it's got to go anyway, and here we've kind of gone through all these machinations um, of, you know, granting the variance where it, um, it has to come down. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, just a few thoughts that, that I have on this, and, and I am respectful of all the comments um, that have been received, uh, particularly uh, Commissioner Keeney, in terms of um, not granting special privilege and, and adhering to our, our general plan and, and the zoning. That, that is important. That is not a trivial matter. Um, for me personally, uh, again, balancing it against private property rights, that's also not a, not a trivial matter. I do concur that the application I find to be fairly weak in uh, describing the circumstances that warrant the variance. Okay, it, it's not really strong there. I, I think it's much stronger if, if we say this is attractive, it doesn't interfere with, with the neighbors, doesn't create a detriment and go down that particular road. Um, trees that drop sap and branches are a real annoyance. Okay, and I'll say that as well. And uh, I would much rather see this than the blue tarp covered vehicle than having the trees removed or the parking on the street. So part of what I'm also evaluating is the overall balance of this. And I'm not certain that any other property owner is deprived of the same right to process, meaning they can come here if they need something similar, they could come and argue for why they need it. And, and I don't see, now, and I'm not talking about the, the skirt here because I think there could be a legitimate issue and it's within the, the commission's purview to condition this, okay? I, I don't see how this detracts at all and it, and it allows somebody the, 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 the free use and enjoyment of, of their property that's not taking away from a neighbor. And we have a neighbor supporting it. Now, however, the neighbor today supports it. <laughs> the neighbor tomorrow could not. But again, the alternative it would be perfectly legal to park something there and, and then they'd, they'd have to look at that. So that becomes kind of the balance. So my, my inclination in this particular specific case is probably going to be to support the request. Um, but I haven't decided yet. I'm just kind of where the chair is at this moment. Commissioner. 
I'd uh, just like to uh, comment. Uh, first, you, you said process, and um, we're, uh, yeah, we're not denying anyone access to the process. If another property owner on Oak Terrace anywhere in Placerville with similar situation certainly can come Correct. before us and, and present their arguments. Um, so that's not being denied. So I, I just want to make sure that I'm clear about that. And then also to get back a little bit to the idea of a blue tarped RV or you know whether alternative would be to a, a, a nice looking carport. As the way I read um, the the standard of review, uh, you know, that's that's not strong enough, uh, and I don't want to speak in legal terms. That's not you know what we're here to do. But I do know that these things are up for public review, and if a member of the public felt like we used aesthetics as opposed to the more strictly uh, the strict definition of uh, special circumstances and. Uh, denying privilege or access or use. I, I really think that we should uh, hew to those two things. I, I agree with both of your comments that th this is a much, much, much better looking uh, thing than a, a blue tarp that you can see from the road, for example. But that's, um, I don't think that that's what we should be primarily basing our decision on tonight. Thank you. Additional comments? I will, I will say that uh, from the chair's perspective, I do not believe that granting this request would be granting special privilege. So I, I don't believe that that standard is, is met. With regards to the special circumstances, I think that that's probably the area of, of a little bit um, concerns the wrong word. That, again, as I mentioned, that's where the application is perhaps, is perhaps weakest. But for me personally, you know, I, I would say if you want to mitigate, if you want to mitigate the problem, there are a couple of ways to mitigate the problem. And so, and I would extend the problem to be special circumstances of the, not the topography per se, but of, of the landscape. So uh, I, I could be comfortable making that finding. That's just where I'm at. So. In the absence, then the chair, the chair will 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 make a motion, and if only to get the discussion going, and and I'll, I'll actually I'll just kind of float the concept. My my motion would be something along the lines of approving uh, the variance, but requiring that the skirt that we have discussed be removed, and and then the, leaving the, the the structure open, and and I do that on the basis of concern over fire safety. And, and, I, and I base that then again on staff's comments that that is the one area that may have been subject to review. So um, I believe that's within our purview and that's probably what I would be proposing. The skirt, as you're calling it, really has very little to do with the variance, though. You're looking at the structure. Right. You're, but the, you're but trying right. to design the structure uh, for No, I, uh, well, I, respectfully, I would disagree to the extent that the reason we have the setbacks are uh, in part for, for fire safety. And so by having this structure this way may compromise the safety component. But we're looking I, at... I can, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead, you okay. have the chair. I, I can almost guarantee that when the building inspector goes out there that he's gonna require them to fireproof that surface. There, there's no doubt in my mind that he will. So that is a moot point as far as I'm concerned. Chair would entertain an alternative motion since I didn't really make a formal motion. Well, I uh, would like to make a motion. All right. Um, my motion is that um, we uh, continue this item and uh, ask the applicant and uh, work with staff to develop uh, stronger findings um, and to give us the uh, support we need to make a decision. I know that this has uh, been going on for a while. I noticed that there were two different dates on the letters um, from your neighbor, but um, my motion is to uh, continue this uh, so that we can get some more information so that we fully understand and can uh, support, uh, possibly support granting a variance. Is there a second to the commissioner's motion? I'll second. A motion and a second uh, to continue this. Uh, we would probably have to continue it to a date certain. I think that would be staff's preference. And uh, I think the motion is in itself uh, 
fairly clear. Um, as much as I generally don't like to continue things if we don't have to, uh, I do appreciate uh, the compromise because it, it <coughs> avoids an immediate uh, denial of the request, number one. Number two, it provides the applicant an opportunity uh, to really work a little bit harder to, to making the justification, which, you know, makes it a little bit easier for us to make our decision one way or the other. So I, I could probably support uh, the motion as proposed. Any other uh, thoughts or discussion? All right, then I'll call the question. All in favor on the motion? Oh, yeah, oh, we need to go yeah, to the date yeah, certain. Was, yeah. uh, Point of order. Yeah. So uh, 30, 60, 90 days, and uh, whatever meeting falls, the, the, the soonest meeting. So we need to pick, need to pick that. I have a, a question to staff on that. Good. Would it be possible if we were to say in the next 30 days, um, I'm just using that as, a, as a, a number right now, would the building inspector be able to be out there so that we'd have that as part of our package if it came back to us? So the I, I like, commission's I, requesting an inspection by staff from our building department? Correct, so that we know uh, I'll, I'll if there the were any respond. structural issues. I just, I'd rather have a complete understanding of what we're facing as opposed to approving something or not approving something only for staff to have yeah. to go back out and either come back and say, well, it's it's not structurally sound or some other issue. Well, unfortunate, uh, what we have here is the cart before the horse. Um, typically, an applicant would have sought out the variance uh, to reduce a setback prior to building the structure. Could have been a house in this case the carport so typically speaking also is um the applicant is trying to get their entitlement to the structure before they pull the building permit which they didn't get to build the carport so they're not going to come in and the and staff is not going to entertain a building permit until the entitlement is granted okay. alternatively then they could consult uh, a subject matter expert on this I'm sure there's plenty of uh, individuals in the construction business who could say, you're going to have to do this. This is, this is what the inspector is going to require. Uh, I, I can add some information to yeah. that. They, they have submitted for plan check, but the city will not issue the permit until this entitlement, as the director Rivas has mentioned, is obtained. Right. I get that. Uh, so that submittal of a plan check does include a engineer uh, evaluation of the carport structure and that was submitted with and as part of the building plan check uh, so, so, so the, as part of that evaluation will will they look at it and and uh, will either reject this this skirt or specify the conditions that stay there like fireproofing we can certainly have I can certainly request that our building official uh, button up his recommended condition perhaps provide the commission with what would make or what um, what needs to be done to make it fire resistant is that is that kind of what I'm hearing you well, to I, say? yeah I think the I think the basic question here and, and Commissioner Keene raises as a concern is we don't want to approve this only if the the city uh, is going to go out there and say oh no you can't you can't have you got to take this down this is this isn't going to work right. we're trying to find out if 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 it otherwise if it was presuming the entitlement existed it would otherwise be okay or it would require the following you know modification or what that's that's all we're trying to get. okay so th is the skirt the issue i'm trying to understand from, it from my perspective it is well the, the design of the structure is not your purview tonight i, I get that yeah mm -hmm. so so we're but we're simply asking is uh, will you allow a variance of mm -hmm. approximately 1.5 feet as long property? as it's safe <laughs> right. okay. and i um, we have to assume that the building department will make sure that it's safe that's Correct. not yeah right. and i think that's what commissioner lists uh issues all mm -hmm. right so uh having said that uh we have a motion and a second is there any additional discussion oh uh we got to get we got to pull the date so do you want to go the first meeting that's at or immediately after 30 days 60 days or 90 days i think is the best way how many days i assume sooner rather than later for the applicant um so what's i'm i'm good with I, I, I 60 30 uh, oh. i don't i'm good either way i'm staff have a preference on this well, we, we do anticipate having two items on July 17th. 
and that is approximately 30 days. Uh, so that I know we have an agenda. Uh, subsequent to that, uh, nothing's been firmed, so I don't. All right. Well, then I, I but would 60 would be fine with staff. Well, I as would well. recommend that we go ahead and uh, we, the motion would be amended to uh, specify that particular date. If we get to that date and the applicant isn't ready, can always be continued subsequent to that. Perhaps no. I can interject something else yep. be because of the way. <laughs> I don't want to go into the story, but. Um, because of the way we we provide you with staff reports two weeks prior, right. that would really limit their potential time turnaround time to get what you need. All right. You and see what I mean? They would only have day, a, it sounds like sixty days is yeah. better. Whatever whatever meeting falls on or immediately thereafter, subsequent to if, sixty if days. If that's fine with you, I can put that date in in the draft minutes. Okay. Right now I don't have a calendar in front of me, but sixty days is that what I'm hearing from? Yes. Uh, yeah, that, that works. I'm okay. still entertaining discussion. Should we ask the applicants if they could be ready? That's a good good option, too. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and invite the applicant to return to the podium. We may have one or two more questions. I presume you understand the direction that we're going. <laughs> well, I, I guess I do, but I'm not, I'm not quite sure what you're after. All right, what, so... I so mean, in order, the, in order the carport for us, itself. Hold on, let me just let me let me. I'll try to okay. explain. All right. In order for us to make a decision, we have to have we have to come up with findings. We have to make a determination of findings that warrant either granting you what some would consider to be a special mm -hmm. privilege or denying it. And and so as you've heard us discuss, we found the applicant or the application to be somewhat weak in the area of. What are the special circumstances that warrant us granting you this variance? And so what we're giving you the opportunity to do is we're going to give you uh, 60 days approximately to go back and look at this. You can talk to staff and see if you can't strengthen your application and say, this is why our, our property, for whatever reason you come up with, warrants special consideration for granting the variance. That's really what, what we have to do. That's our process that we have to follow to do this. Otherwise, we, we become arbitrary from application to application to application. So we have to have consistency. Can I, can I explain to you right now uh, the biggest reason that is where it's at? Or does it not? Or does it, is it too we, late? It's not. We have not taken a vote. I, I will defer to my commissioners as to whether or not you can allow them to speak and then we can make a decision sure absolutely you're here. our driveway is was so steep when we when we drove down to the front of the garage when you parked you literally opened the door and about tear your doors right off the car it doesn't look that way now because we brought the driveway down in front of the garage it's steeper back further, but we brought it down in front of the garage and then leveled it out. We were simply looking for a level place to park a car. Right. So, so and that and so we we put that alongside the garage, and we had two big branches fall off of that big tree in between the house and the garage, which I'd love to take out, but we we won't. And it dented the hood of the Nissan pickup twice. Not once, twice. So that's why we were looking for something to put over the top of our vehicles. And the sap just rains down off that tree and our neighbor's tree. And they're both about the same size. So I'm not going to speak for the rest of the commission, and any one of my commissioners can jump in at any time. And what I'm going to suggest to you is it's that type of detail that would be helpful to put in your packet and bring back to the commission so we have that on the record as part of our findings for us to consider. And you can talk about what the alternatives are, which it sounds like taking out some pretty nice trees, which you probably don't want to do. I but, thought that's all in but the, the issue. But the issue <clears throat> is, the issue is you have the driveway. I understand you, you flattening out the driveway. That's all great. The issue is the, not only just the structure, but the structure being within the setback. If your structure went to the 10 foot line, you wouldn't have to be here either. So that, that, that's what we have to do. So 
but the house is in the garage, the existing garage is built in such a space that there's not room for that alongside of it, unless we take the big tree out. Right, so, right, I get, so that is really the kind of detail that you should put in. I we're thought that was That's in there. what you have in front of you, unless then, you have a wrong. All right. Unless you yeah, don't have it all. Then if I, I will. If I can interject, I, I think what you're referring to is, is your, your answers to the questions do they in the have application. The I think that's what, what you were right. stating. It does mention the driveway. It does mention tree uh, damage caused by trees. Um, right. yeah. To really appreciate what we're trying to say, you would almost have had to been there before we changed the driveway. Sure, I, I was so tired of the driveway. Every time you pull your car into gear, it feels like it's going to drop the transmission Correct. Yeah, right I, on I know I mean, exactly. That's, that's all I'm trying I to live on a steep road here. I, I know I, I do. I am sympathetic. So, so, all right. And then we just wanted something to protect them from okay. all the. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. So now I will bring it back to the commission for one last time. And having given that additional information, plus the information that staff has pointed out that's in, that's in mm -hmm. the staff report. And I'll ask the commission then uh, straight up if, if, if that is sufficient justification to meet the standard of the special circumstances of uh, for for the variance, and in this case, it, it, the, the argument is for the protection of, of property, because if you don't have something, you, you, you wouldn't be able to park anything else there. As far as I I can tell, the structure would not be the way that the house is. You don't have enough room to put anything else in there, and so and then frankly, if you even if you did, I can't measure what ten feet is here, but it would be a it wouldn't be a balanced looking structure at least from. So my, my inclination would be to support the request. I think the outcome postponing it is going to be the same as, as if we took a vote tonight. Um, I'm not in favor of postponing. Okay, we do have a motion on the table. Yes, you do. We mm -hmm. might as well go ahead and, and call that question. Call that question. And, and, and the motion, just to be clear, the motion was uh, to postpone uh, for 60 days to, to the next meeting Correct. on or immediately thereafter. So we're all clear on the motion. All right. Um, we'll go ahead and do a roll call vote, please. Member List? No. Chair Friend? Uh, no. Uh, Vice Chair Keeney? No. Member Saragossa? Yes. Okay. So the motion uh, fails on a, a three to one uh, nay vote. Uh, so then. Uh, do we have a motion uh, on the request before us this evening? I move that uh, we approve variance 18-01, found on page 7, items 1, 2, and 3. I need a second, if I can get a second on that. The chair will second it for the, for the purpose of discussion and then ask the maker of the motion that we will need to have some findings that support the granting of the variance. And your, your side, I'm sorry. Go, pull me back to the page number. Page seven. Naturally, the chair has got his pages mixed up. Give me just a second. You're just all over the place. I am, I am. <laughs> so, so in summary, uh, member list, you are making a motion to approve the request as submitted. That's Would correct. that be simpler? Okay. That's, that's correct. Yeah. And again, we're under discussion now. Okay, so your, your finding is, I guess what I'm, what I'm looking for, I, I was looking for something a little bit more specific as to what it doesn't grant special privilege and or there's particular circumstance. I'm not, I'm not sure I see that on page seven. But if, unless staff objects to the motion as presented, then I, I will allow additional discussion and I'll, I'll call the vote. Staff has no objection. All right. Any other commissioners before I call the vote? Do we have a second? I seconded it. Oh, you say, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. For Pardon the me. Of discussion. I didn't want to languish. Uh, I just time. want to reiterate that uh, I don't feel that the findings of fact uh, on page 7 and A, B, C, and D meet the, the standard um, that I feel we need to 
substantiate granting the variance of uh, special conditions and not extending, um, let's see, uh, how do I, it doesn't meet the standards of review that we discussed earlier. Um, and uh, I, I don't know how we would, uh, how we could uh, so mitigate that. Thank you, because the chair understands, I think, exactly your point. It is kind of getting to, to the point I, I want to make. Commissioner Saragosa, your light is on. Oh. Okay. So um, I want to uh, have a request a, a friendly amendment to the motion and add the additional findings to support the special circumstances as found on the in the uh, packet uh, titled for lack of a better purpose, answers to questions on okay. requirements for filing application for a variance. Where, and, and Andrew, I'll, I'll, I'll synthesize this down to something that's okay, reasonable in motion. Good. That, you uh, usually do. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say that uh, I'd like to amend the motion to include that the, let me just get it together here. The findings of fact to support the motion come, uh, comes additionally from information uh, submitted right. submitted that's by just, the applicant. Yes, correct. So, okay. I, I'm going I'm going to accept I'm going to accept what's here as the as, as an argument for the special circumstances that warrant the variance. And also I will include that I find that we, we find that there's no special privilege being granted to them by approving this. That, that's kind of my, it's kind of my amendment because I don't believe they're getting a special privilege. I don't think that, I don't think that's a problem. Are you following what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm just trying to strengthen it a little bit because I think we do have to meet the standards, as, as Commissioner Keeney says, and I, and I want to get as close to that as we possibly can. If you'll accept that friendly amendment. Did I get that? Perhaps could you concise summarize? Yeah, it, so, it, so I know you, you're... I'm going to amend the motion to say that our, that our findings, findings include that there is no granting of a special privilege in the approval of this request, and that... Uh, uh, the, 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 the damage uh, that has been caused and can be reasonably expected to continue to be caused by the presence of mature trees warrant the placement of the structure in the setback. How's that? Does that work? Then we can have an up or down vote on that. Did that make sense? It, it did was that intended as uh, perhaps two uh, e or an amendment to perhaps c, which does describe landscape features such as the pine That's tree? That's fine. I, I just I was just couching it as, as the special findings because okay. variance we have we have to find in the negative on one side that it's not right. granting special privilege, and then the affirmative on the other side that there are special circumstances that warrant doing this. If I understand correctly. So yes. I gave you both an affirmative and a... Thank you. Right. And, and then... Uh, I'm good with that. Okay, so the maker of the motion accepts my friendly amendment. Any additional discussion? Now we'll ask for a roll call vote on the motion, please. Vice Chair Keeney. No. Member Saragosa. No. Chair Friend. Yes. Member List. Yes. So we have a split decision, which I believe means it can be appealed to, it fails. It fails. The motion fails. It's a denial. It's, of it's the, been denied, yeah. essentially. And so it can be appealed to the city council. Correct. All right. Now, going back to continuous, when we may have had five members. That may have made a difference. It may not have. But so we were unable to come to a consensus to grant your request. Your remedy is to appeal it to the city council so um, is there a fee associated with that application unfortunately there's a fee associated with that application yes. process 
Um, but that, that's, that's really where you have to go, and it's possible that even if we had approved it, somebody could have appealed it anyway, and you may have wound up there. I believe it's a $400 fee, and the filing would need to occur within 10 calendar days. All right, so you have 10 calendar days, uh, with tomorrow being calendar day number one? Yes. Okay, 10 calendar days uh, to file your appeal to the city council, and they will hear the request, and their decision will be final. The, the filing is done with our city clerk on the fourth floor. The applications for that request can be downloaded from the city's website or obtained from our second floor. All right, thank you and apologies. I will thank my uh, fellow commissioners though for the deliberation on that. Okay, now I will not be able to find my agenda in this pile. Ah, I found it. I, I make myself a liar. That brings us then to uh, item five, new business, which I believe due to the absence of our fifth commissioner, we're unable to take action. And so we are going to hold this item over to the next regularly scheduled meeting. Yes, and that meeting, which I will discuss in item 6.2, will be the July 17th. Okay, meeting. terrific. All right, so item 6.1, any uh, matters from commissioners to staff or to the public? Uh, go ahead, Commissioner List. Um, I noticed that our um, illustrious parking lot down the street here, nothing is happening. Um, is there been any more contact with the owner on that or where, where do we stand with that uh, are you f referring to the lot next to cnh yes. auto parts yes yeah the owner of that property has submitted um uh, improvement plans to the city we're currently reviewing actually we've completed our review of those improvement plans and we're scheduled to meet with the applicant then and work with that you're very welcome Um, just, I know we had talked about this earlier, which would be the, on the windows and perhaps other, um, items similar to windows, uh, in terms of, I hate to use the term ministerial, but the fact that if there are always, you know, if, if there's not a compelling reason to say no, um, because they're not, maybe if they're doing a whole different type of window, but if there's single hung or double hung that looks similar to, what was in a historical structure um you know does it make sense to continue to bring applicants out in front of us um to continue to just say yes on these because we don't you know as long as they're staying within the um structural integrity of, of the of it and staying within the historical context um you know where we have generally said yes to that um you know i want to make it easier for applicants i think that's my goal is to streamline that that is you know are we in you know maybe future planning commissions would have a different idea on this but uh from where i sit i think um if they're following a certain guideline and it fits within that like we would with any other um and maybe we have to set that as as a as an actual guideline but for something that if it conforms and it stays within the historical context um it almost seems like we're just rubber stamping in approval at that point. So I don't know if anyone has any, any thoughts on that. But I do have thoughts on that. And from, from a higher, higher not meaning better or worse, just kind of broader, a broader overview. I mean, we heard in, in some of the public comment the issue, we, we have the historic district, and then we have the federal designation of these districts and all that. And then there was the suggestion that if we allow these, you know, the continued replacements like we have had, that the historic district is eroding. And, and so I'm, I'm trying to pull all this together. Um, the city sets the districts by ordinance, I believe. Correct. And I don't know that the, the feds or anybody else can take that away from us. The city says. They cannot. Yeah, based upon whatever uh, criteria the city decides, it is what it is, okay? 
but then there was the reference to the uh, Secretary of Interior's guide, and I remember that came before us some time back, and I'm uh, unfortunately, I have to admit that I don't recall precisely what our requirements are. What is the, the filter or the examination standard that is supposed to be applied by the city, by, by staff, uh, relative to that document? Or is it strictly taken presently as a guideline? When you look at the standards, they provide you with recommended and not recommended activities. And so it's the burden of this body to determine whether or not, based on the circumstances of the request, are, do they indeed meet the intent and purpose of those guidelines. So they're not broadly compulsory. So I guess perhaps, perhaps the Commission's discomfort with this is there is not an established defined city policy that says here is in fact what the standard is going to be. This is what the state, the city is going to require. And I'm not, I'm not arguing for something. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong, but I, I guess, uh, part of the, the challenge is it is in fact left to us. Okay. And that, and if the city council simply said, well, it is what it is. Then we would simply be rubber stamping there. There wouldn't be value. So maybe we do have to, we have to step up into the role that we're given. Um, that doesn't make it any easier. Commissioner? If um, in, staff could provide a comment, and basically this is, is also in response to comments from the, from the public. Um, the historic districts in Placerville are local historic districts. They're not state and they're not federal. Right. One of the standards is that the changes or modifications made to an historic structure is in concert with the Secretary of Interior uh, guidelines. And so even within an historic district, you can have a wide range of uh, buildings of being built during different um, time periods. But the overall theme is to provide for an overall character of an historic um, presence that Placerville has. So for example, if somebody wants to build a, a home on a vacant lot in, in one of the historic districts, well, it would come before you so that the architecture of that brand new home uh, would not overly detract from the overall historic character of the district. And Mr. Painter can correct me if I'm in error here, but uh, the council has on occasion uh, made a finding that, an, that a, a structure is historic and first, first, you know, besides being located in a historic district and subject to uh, site plan review where it comes before you, you know, the city created this to raise the bar of that review to maintain its integrity as, as Commissioner Friend had just stated. And so your option would be to um, or our option would be to amend the code to allow greater discretion at the staff level for certain things if the staff feels that it meets the intent of the historic district, that it meets our design guidelines that the city has adopted, or if it's one of, or if it's a historic building within the historic district that was designated as historic, maybe then it gets an even higher standard where we would make sure that it meets, uh, you know, to the letter of the Secretary of Interior guidelines, as opposed to the one that was before you earlier, where the house has been modified somewhat over time. It had vinyl siding. It may have had um, vinyl sliding windows and that kind of thing to where it's already been compromised so that you have a little bit more latitude. So I guess the bottom line of what I'm trying to say is you have broad discretion. And so the question that was raised by, by uh, Commissioner Zaragoza is should some of that discretion be uh, given to the staff right. or not? And so that's really what you're weighing here. So the city felt it important to create these. The city felt it important to create the site plan review uh, process and that the commission would make that decision and not at the staff level. You know, it, it, it may be a rubber stamp, but it's my rubber stamp. <laughs> Yeah, as, no, opposed, I, as opposed to the staff's know, rubber stamp. On the, other, on the other issue, I've been on the commission now, I think this is my either my fifth or sixth year, and we've had three of these. Mm -hmm. 
I remember the first one, I'm going, this is nuts. You sit up there and, and you know, somebody comes in and all they want to do is change out a window. And, and as I have been here these years, I have more appreciation for the historical district. And, and not that I don't trust these guys <laughs> and, their, and, and their office, I think we need to have a public review of that. I agree. Okay. I, I think it uh, gathering public comment on these issues, um, you know, it. I, I voted in favor of, of it. I, I think it's practically uh, ministerial, but I, I think it's important for us to hear the public, hear their concerns, and it is a case by case basis. The next one that comes up to us, it may not. The house may not be as modified as the one we had tonight. Um, so, yeah, I, I appreciate that, you know, we give the public chance to comment. The, the nut is the word discretion. At the end of the day, that, that's where the real nut is. Okay, so we have the discretion, but what is going to be, what are going to be the objective parameters that's going to drive our discretion? And I think everyone wants to be fair and objective and not arbitrary, and, and that might be part of where the challenge is. Um, a suggestion was made to me that, um, you know, perhaps we should see we should see some effort by the property owner to have considered authentic replacement versus this, and 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 I th and that's why I asked the question about cost because I think it's well known that the cost of the absolute authentic replacements far exceeds what you're able to do for a variety of reasons. Okay, and and. You know, that might be enough because we can't compel or require people to do this. I know the argument is, well, you know, they bought, they bought property in that district. Well, that may be true, but so, I mean, what, so what, right? I mean, it, 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 it's, yeah. So, all right. I, I think we're, we're going to have to hold on to this for a while. We're going to have to try to come up perhaps with, uh, a process and some standards of our own that we can apply and lay the ground for future commissioners and and uh, for the time being we'll hold on to the rubber stamp and see how it goes all right uh, I have one item just for uh, from commissioners and that is uh, don't forget the brew fest on Saturday and does staff have any information or update you can provide provide for us on the status of the, of the park and ride the the work is very aggressive right now it's fairly stark and um, I know people are noticing it at the west end of town at, at the Forney Road interchange and what's going on and expected completion and anything else you might be able to share to allay concerns of the public would you be could you provide something at the next regular scheduled meeting yeah certainly That'd be and, great. and we can also we're, we'd be happy to email you uh, information but we have um, regular progress reports that are available on the city's website okay, so I think you can individually seek that out if you can't let me know and we're happy to mail you or sure. send you a link or and for the broader public, whatever so they know where to right get that information. but uh, yeah all, all that information is available on the city's website in in rather good detail thank you so items uh, from uh, staff yeah, Steph provided in your packet a couple of articles that were recently, well, in a recent issue of the planning magazine, and they're really meant for the planning commissioner. In fact, that's the section that that magazine devotes to planning commission and planning commission related uh, information. And uh, since the uh, it's not directed at any particular member. <laughs> it's just uh, general information regarding regarding the running of meetings and and uh, uh, you know the process, et cetera. And so I thought it might be beneficial to to you all, or as as a refresher, um, as you come back to uh, being a chair. <laughs> Thank you. I'll, I didn't, I'll, I'll I didn't take aside. any umbrage at the uh, <laughs> timing of this particular article, but I do thank you very much for it. If I could make another comment in in these regards, um, uh, the city does have a tight budget, and so the uh, training, travel, conference, you know, those those that funding has been greatly curtailed, and so you can expect staff to do its best to 
try and uh, provide you with information or anything that we find that may be of benefit to you to read on your own. Thank you. Uh, upcoming? Yeah, well, j once again, to remind you, we, we will not be meeting on the 3rd. Okay. Uh, public notice for the 17th will go out tomorrow or, okay. yeah, tomorrow. Um, we'll have two items. One of them is a historic district review request. Uh, and not window related, just to let you know. Uh, the other item is an extension request for the Toad Hall project on Spring Street. Um, that is one last uh, six month um, request for an extension. Okay. Thank you. Uh, if there is no other business, I believe that brings us to adjournment. Staff will get a legal opinion on that. <laughs>